Okay, Steve, I'm going to begin the disassembly of your Sato FA82 here in preparation for bearing replacement. done tonight I don't have my gloves on so <clears throat> let me throw those on here real quick all right so let's finish up here or no finish up here I just started this carb off. These gloves are hot already. Okay, so we got the little sealer, metal sealer thing there. I don't know exactly what that's called. We got a nice looking o-ring in here. All these screws feel very nice. They're popping that nice soft little pop sound. Breaking free the torque. So this engine obviously has never been disassembled before. Gasket for now looks like it's intact. Kind of grungy looking in there. Let's see where's my all in all it doesn't look too bad. Pull these rocker covers off. Wow, it <laughs> looks pristine. This is a low time engine. I don't care how old it is. You know, in theory, in theory, if this was my engine and I was only going to be running it on the engine test stand, I would just oil this thing up, heat it up, spin it over, and not change the bearings. But if this is going to be a flying... I mean, the bearings may not actually be bad. They may just be kind of cruddy. Um, some build up on them. But I need I need to grab this. Let's see how interesting this is gonna be. Let's make sure we got the right exactly the right bit there.
that, what you just witnessed, is the most tense portion of disassembling a Sato engine. These gaskets are just coming right off. I'll leave that one on until I get this screw up. Because I've had far too many Sato engines where this thing was just torqued way too much. Not from the factory, from another person that thought they knew what they were doing. Because this is not those pins do not need to be torqued like that at all push rods on Sato engines oh, you're not going to be able to see it there do have an orientation one side is more flat, the other side is more pointed. The pointed side goes up into the rocker arm. Let's see if this one wants to come out just as easily. Yep. So I'm pretty confident that any time I've encountered issues with these deals, the guide pins, that it's been because somebody else had been in the engine and over torque them. So the thing is you don't need to over torque. You don't need to put any torque on those rocker pins at all. None. All you do is run them in until they're flush because there's no way in hell that thing is coming out when you got rocker arm covers on. It's just not going to happen. So there is absolutely no reason to ever put any kind of real torque on those at all. You just simply run them in until they're flush and that's it. And anybody else that says otherwise is a complete moron. Now it's time for a short little cut off. I got black gloves on. Cut off. L wrench so we can get in here and get full engagement. Some of these things are so tight that the uh, Bending my wrench. Okay, I don't like the way that one felt. I may have to heat these. Did I already do this one? I just bent my wrench again even more. Did I say that how hot these gloves were? Man, these gloves are really warm. So there are two, two stressful things, two things that can be stressful in disassembling a Sato engine. The first one is making sure that somebody didn't over torque these things. And then the second thing is loosening up the head screws. Either one of those things getting damaged can kind of ruin your day. And here's our piston. Very low run time. Now this I'm going to have to heat up to pull that pin out and I'm not going to do that now. It's I'm not 
pulling the heat gun out this time of night. Let's see, where's my flashlight? A little carameling on the carbon buildup on the bottoms of those valves. They feel good. Wow, looks beautiful. I mean, this engine doesn't really have a whole lot of runtime on it. <clears throat> Bearings can still be replaced, so gently take this gasket off. I think these gaskets will survive. These are the original, obviously, original Sato gaskets. Obviously, they're the original Sato gaskets because I already confirmed that the engine has never been disassembled before. And that's probably about as far as I'm going to go tonight. Because I'm going to need the heat gun for these other things. <clears throat> Sometimes these little rubber things can be a little problematic. These boots can be a little problematic to get off. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty, pretty crunchy. So the final thing I'm going to do tonight is... In the past, many of you have seen, I used to have these bearing pullers from Harbor Freight. In the past, I had two-jawed versions. This time I thought, well, I'll try and buy, I'll buy three-jawed, the three-jawed ones. That'll give me a little bit more gripping power and won't slide around. But what that also meant was, again, yet again, see... The cut out here, I had to Dremel each of those <clears throat> to fit in drive hubs just like this. So I'm not sure if they're all Dremel down enough. They fit in the one engine I already did. So we're just going to have to wait and see if I can get a good grip on this one here. The one thing I thought was, you know, it'd be nice to have these three jaws. This thing is screws are coming off but it's a lot more challenging to get them in place I think I'm just gonna have to take these gloves off because you have to try to hold all of these in place. Now you're instead of holding two, you're holding three. And my hand is really just not big enough to do that adequately. So I have to kind of slightly tighten it and then make sure they're still engaged. Yeah, I don't know. I may have to go out and dremel. Dremel these things down a little bit more. I don't want to have to do that. But <clears throat> basically what I'm going to do is just put tension on this. Put oil in here. I'm just going to put tension on this and see if I can put just an, another little bit of tension on there. And then just let it sit overnight. And in the middle of the night I may hear it just pop. So 
there's some tension on it. Otherwise what I'll do is let that oil soak in there overnight, come out here with the heat gun and pff, it'll pop right off. Now the one, I did this with a Super Tiger engine, which video hasn't been made or published. Um, and I was just sitting there and I was like, okay, well this thing's in place, I'm just gonna let it sit there. And I started going off and doing something else, all of a sudden I hear this snap and everything fell off and that thing came right off and didn't need any heat. So this has got some pretty good pressure on it right now. So I'm just gonna, ooh, did I hear something? I thought I heard something. I may hear this thing just snap in the middle of the night. Because <clears throat> this green one oil will soak in there and it'll start dissolving some of that uh, dried on residue that's holding, that's helping to hold that in place. Now that's a very strong mechanical fit there, so that's where we're going to leave it at this time and I'll just add to this video the complete completion of the disassembly, but there's really not a whole lot left to do. Pull the, I mean maybe I won't even do it, it's not that big of a deal. I mean you heat this thing up and you get a drive or a punch and you push this pin out and then this um, get a 1.5 millimeter hex and loosen up that set screw, heat this thing up, push this thing out, and then your timing gears out. And then your cap tappets will fall out and then I gotta get these little plastic push rod deals off here. Um, but I mean other than that, the carb I don't think needs to be disassembled. It seems perfect. Dropping the valves is not that big of a deal. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna do it. I may just see if I can clean those up. I mean, there's, I don't even really see any carbon buildup. There's a little bit on this exhaust valve. I'll probably drop the valves anyway, but other than that, taking this out once it's collets off, I just take this out to the garage and heat this thing up and just tap that crankshaft until it comes out and you got bearings out. No big deal. So anyway, that's a, uh, 90% of the disassembly of your engine, Steve. I didn't realize that thing was like hogging the f hogging the focus. That's funny.